Hey guys, I'm Leg Day. I'm a commentator and analyst for Overwatch Contenders Europe, and I'm here to talk to you about a recent movement that sort of occurred in the Overwatch community called Hashtag Rework Mercy, and I'm going to go through a couple of things that I think mean Mercy may need changes in different areas, and what I think would really help the character. Now, of course, everyone wants their favourite character to be strong so they can play them all the time, but it seems like some of the most common arguments regarding Mercy don't necessarily say that she's too weak in some areas, but have to do with players feeling that they're having an impact on her or trying to make the gameplay more engaging. So the proposed changes that I will be showing off here, they're kind of trying to deal with the ability to make Mercy a little bit more engaging. But first of all, I think it's worth lending some context, or at least my theory, regarding why Mercy has such fervor around her state. And I think that's because Mercy was a great introduction for a lot of people who'd never played FPS before to come into the Overwatch space. And while a lot of characters are more aim-dependent, Mercy can very much get by with less mechanical skill, even though it will eventually grow. But it's more about brain power and decision making. And I put a lot of power in, into the hands of players who may not have come from an FPS background, but still wanted to feel impactful in the game. And I'm a tank main, so I know this. I came from MMOs and I couldn't aim to save my life, but I picked up Reinhardt and I understood the composition's ways of making space and creating safety nets for your team to act, like play within. And I think that that ability to transition people to Overwatch and to keep them interested is one of the main reasons why people care so much about Mercy. And because of the nature of Mercy's play like that, the Gameplay changes that I'm going to be sort of like proposing here or playing around with the ideas are not only about trying to make her gameplay stay a little bit more engaging and impactful, but also about creating a transitionary skill set so that if Mercy is weak in some metas or can't really fit into specific compositions or in certain maps, that you have transitionary mechanical skill that you can bring to other heroes, whether it be support, DPS, or tank. And already, there's a lot of skill that comes with Mercy that is able to transition a lot of game sense that we see move from players and there's great players who do this like Dredro, like Luddy and a load of players in the Overwatch League but I do think that a little bit more of a mechanical basis for Mercy might be incredibly impactful. So the first change I'm going to propose regards beam proximity or aiming regarding how close it is to the primary target of Mercy and I think that here you can have a scaling healing factor from 40 to 50 to 60 HPS depending on whether you're looking in the opposite direction, in the general direction, or directly aiming at your primary target. And that would also scale with like 20%, 30%, and 35% damage boost. And the reason why I chose these numbers is because it means that if you don't have that perfect tracking that a lot of people don't, whether they're Mercy players or not, you can still be as effective with Mercy as she currently is without having that perfect tracking onto the ally that you're healing, but you are incentivized and you're rewarded for being able to track bigger targets, smaller targets, whoever you need to deliver the most healing to or the most damage to, you are rewarded for being able to do that, but also it's all about decision making for Mercy, so you need to look around, we all know that, you need to have the situational awareness, where are the flankers, where are the enemy coming from? And you've got to make that decision, are you doing your maximum healing and damage output, or are you gathering information? That sort of echoes what you have to do with DPS as well, where you can't just tunnel vision on one hero and keep on shooting. You've got to look around, you've got to be aware, and Mercy's at the moment, they can do this pretty much for free, which is pretty good. Always doing 50 HPS, but it means that sort of, you're not building any decision making in the regular gameplay except who you're going to be healing. You can add enough a layer of complexity to this to really differentiate the best mercies from the good mercies. It's not just about differentiating the good from the best mercies, it's about creating a more engaging gameplay style where you're constantly questioning where you are, what you're aiming at, where your cursor is. Am I gathering enough information? Am I doing enough healing? Is my healing in the right place? Am I in the right place? And I think that if you have that engagement, especially while you're aiming as well, it's going to make for a much more engaging and interactive experience when you're playing on Mercy, whether you're filling in comp or if you're a veteran seasoned player of this particular hero. My second change relates to a lot of feedback that I received when I was questioning a lot of seasoned and veteran Mercy players who really wanted to see the rework happen. And thank you to everyone who responded to me. I know that oftentimes people can get incredibly zealous about video games, especially when it's about something that they really care about. And a lot of people really care about Mercy. So thank you for giving me your feedback. And it seems like one of the most 
contentious things about Mercy right now is Valkyrie. People feel like they're not very effective while they're channeling that ultimate, especially since it's gone through various iterations of nerfs recently. So I think that to make Valkyrie more engaging for a Mercy player, as well as keeping it sort of in check as a support ultimate, I would actually add 30% damage reduction to the primary target of the beam split. And I think this... Like we said before, with the beam aiming, as a level of decision making, you've got to be able to choose who will you be most effective by giving damage reduction to. Even if it's not the ideal beam slitting target, maybe it won't get as much coverage. You also have to communicate with your team. You've got to go around this guy. He's going to be taking a lot of damage. I've got to try and reduce that with a Volcran. I think constantly having to swap around where the damage reduction is to try and outmaneuver an enemy team will be a lot more interesting for Mercy players during their ultimate. But that said, we're not just buffing Mercy Galore, so I'd say like an equal trade-off would be to kind of slightly reduce the duration of Valkyrie, because it's an incredibly long ultimate. It's also pretty oppressive to the enemy team, but for a lot of uh, a lot of heroes, Mercy is pretty much unreachable during Valkyrie because of her ability to fly through the sky, so I'd maybe reduce it to like uh, maybe 12 or 10 seconds while you have this additional responsibility of having the damage reduction to apply to your teammates. For those of you paying attention have noticed that a 35% damage increase could create a couple of problematic scenarios, I have put up a couple of uh, equations up here to show you what some of those damage numbers would be with a 35% damage reason. I've identified two potential problem areas. One would be Widowmaker's Headshot, which would go up to uh, 405 damage, so that would be a one-shot on Orissa, and onto Zaya with a well-aimed Mercy damage boost. And Reinhardt would deal over 100 damage per swing, which means he could two-shot a load of squishy heroes with 35% damage boost. So obviously, it's not necessary maybe maybe it's a little bit overtuned but it's all about discussion in this particular sort of venture so feel free to tell me if you think that's way too much or if maybe it can work out because it demands a lot of the mercy and regarding resurrection though it is a contentious issue i don't think we will ever as a community will ever really agree on what to do it i'd actually reduce the cooldown by five seconds because while resurrection is incredibly powerful the last three heroes that blizzard have introduced ash wrecking ball and brigida all have two methods of shutting down resurrection via knockback or stun. Brigida has shield bash and whip shot. Wrecking Ball can roll through with a grappling hook or he can use his pile driver to knock Mercy up. And Ash can also use the coach gun to knock her back and Bob to knock her up. So that's a lot of ways by which Mercy can be interrupted. And I think that as you increase like this bloat of movement controlling or movement stopping or in this case resurrection stopping abilities into the game, that maybe the cooldown on resurrection really should start to reflect that but this isn't really the most sort of poignant part point i want to make during this video so take up a pinch of salt so yeah guys that was a quick roundup of my thoughts and my ideas regarding how you might be able to change mercy to make her a little bit more engaging a little bit more inter interactive and of course like i said during the video build a transferable skill set so that if you are playing mercy you can also bring those skills to other heroes and enjoy of watching whole new facets because, well, Mercy's great. Love the lore of Mercy and a lot of people enjoy the idea of flying around a battlefield like an angel, healing their teammates and guiding angels are a really fun mechanic that seems consistent across everyone who loves Mercy. They really like that kind of mobility, but Overwatch has got a lot of other heroes that can be tried out as well and I think creating a transitional skill set will create a lot more longevity for players who are enjoying Mercy and overall we just need to take care of our player base because if we are sort of like shoehorning people into various heroes, like saying that they're one tricks or that they can't really play anything else, then, well, we will lose a lot of players over time because they'll get sick of our shit, <laughs> to, uh, to put it bluntly. So creating a place where mercy can be viable is obviously great, but also creating a place where those players feel like they aren't relying specifically on mercy to be part of an effective Overwatch game. Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, I hope to hear your thoughts. Please don't flood me with too much vitriol. Obviously, I'm not a game designer, so these are sort of preliminary ideas, but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one.